Hey what's up guys, welcome to Cert Bros. In this video we're going to be looking at STP optional features, Portfast and BPD UCARD. If you've watched the video on STP, then you'll know the biggest problem with 802.1D is the convergence. The reason for this is the time it takes to go from a non-forwarding state to a forwarding state. So, just as a reminder, a port needs to pass through the listening and learning transitional states and stay there for 15 seconds by default before it can enter a forwarding state. I briefly mentioned on the STP video that this doesn't only affect ports connected to switches. If you've ever plugged a computer into a real Cisco switch or even used a packet tracer, you may have noticed that the port doesn't turn green straight away. It turns orange and stays there for a bit. This is because the port is going through these states. First it enters the listening state for 15 seconds. Then the learning state for 15 seconds. Then finally it enters a forwarding state where traffic can start to pass through. The problem with this is most computers these days boot up in less than 30 seconds, or you might even plug in a laptop that's already switched on. Then when the internet's not working, you might start running IP config and trying to troubleshoot why the internet's not working. Part of this troubleshooting might even be unplugging the cable and then plugging it back in, starting the whole process again. This is where Portfast comes in. Portfast pretty much just says, let's get rid of all this and essentially disables STP altogether. This lets the port start forwarding as soon as it's plugged in. Great, but STP wasn't just created for a laugh. No, it was created to stop switching loops. So disabling it can be dangerous. You must use Portfast with caution. What happens if Brian from down the hall, rocks up with his switch, takes an ethernet cable and plugs it in. With STP disabled, you run the risk of creating switching loops. And we've all seen the effect that this has on the network from the STP video. You'll remember that switches will send BPDUs to negotiate a root bridge. When Brian's switch sends a BPDU to our switch with no protection, it will accept it and probably cause a loop. But, if the switch has BPDU guard enabled, then this protects us from these kind of situations. The switch will see the BPDU, realize it's connected to another switch, block the port and put it into a funny little state called error disabled. I say it's a funny little state because it's not always immediately obvious when looking at the interface status that it is in an error disabled state. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. So let's quickly go over the configuration. Portfast and BPDU guard can be enabled with only one command each. First, let's see what happens when we don't use Portfast. Here's our switch. If we do a quick show spanning tree command, we can see there is no connections at the moment. If I plug in a computer, the port comes up. And if we run the same command, we can see the interface is in a listening state. It will stay here for 15 seconds, but I'll speed this up. If we run the command again, we can see it's in the learning state. Again, it will stay here for 15 seconds. And if we run the command one more time, finally, it's in a forwarding state. So let's configure port fast on this interface. So I'll unplug the computer, enter the configuration terminal, interface fast ethernet 01 to enter the interface configuration, switch port mode access to make sure this interface is an access port, and the command to turn on port fast on this interface is spanning tree port fast. 
When you enter this command, Cisco gives you a warning message, which says, Warning, port fire should only be enabled on ports connected to a single host. This is reminding you that port fires can cause potential switching loops if not used correctly. You have been warned. So that's port fast enabled for this interface. But if this switch is for mostly access ports, then we don't want to be doing this on all interfaces, do we? What we can do instead is turn on port fast by default, then disable it on any ports that need to connect to switches. This makes sense if you have a switch where only a couple of ports connect to other switches. So we'll exit out of this interface. And the command we want is spanning tree port fast default. And again, you'll get the same warning. Okay, so let's test it. We'll exit out, run the same command, show spanning tree VLAN one. And we'll see there's no devices connected. So I'll plug in the computer and we'll run the command again. As you can see, the interface has gone straight to forwarding. No faffing around with listening and learning states, just straight into forwarding. You're going to want to know some show commands for troubleshooting. The first one is show spanning tree summary. Here you can see if port fast default is enabled. The next one is show spanning tree interface fast ethernet 0 1 port fast. This is a very straight to the point command and tells you if port fast is enabled on that interface. And of course, we can always check the running config and see the commands we entered. Okay, so that's port fast. Let's clear the screen and look at BPDU guard. Back to the configuration terminal. And again, we can turn on BPDU guard on a per interface basis by going into the interface configuration. And the command is spanning tree BPDU guard enable. Or if we want to do it globally, we can exit out of here and run the command spanning tree port fast BPDU guard default. Show commands for BPDU guard are pretty much the same as port fast. We have show spanning tree summary, which shows if BPDU guard is on by default. Show spanning tree interface fast ethernet zero one. Detail. This command shows us if port fast and BPDU guard is enabled on the interface. And again, show running config to show our commands. Now I've been using the pipe command with the B to show everything that begins with the word interface. Okay, so with the configuration done, let's see it in action. I'll unplug the computer from earlier. Now I'll plug in a switch to the interface with port fast and BPDU guard enabled and see what happens. The port comes up and it will take a couple of seconds to receive a BPDU. There it is, the switch received a BPDU and disabled the port, putting it into an error disable state. Earlier, I said this state can be a bit of a funny one. That's because if I run a show IP interface brief command, Then it shows the interfaces down. Nowhere here does it tell you that it's an error disabled state. This could be important to remember when troubleshooting. Probably the best place to check if you think an interface could be in an error disabled state is to use the command show interfaces status error disabled. This will quickly show you the interface and the reason for being in an error disabled state. There are some other reasons an interface might go into an error disabled state, but this time it's because of our BPDU guard violation. Another place to look out for this is the command show interface fast ethernet zero slash one. 
for whatever interface you're using. At the top, it will show the error disabled state. So to fix this, you need to first fix the cause of the problem. So let's remove the switch. Then we need to go back into our interface configuration. And issue the shutdown command. Then no shutdown command. This will remove the error disabled state. To prove this works, we will exit here and run the show interface status error disabled command again. As we can see, no interfaces are showing. Now we will plug in the computer again. And if we run the show IP interface brief command, we can see that the interface is now up and it's working again. That's it for Portfast and BPDU Guard. Pretty straightforward and simple, but can be a little bit tricky to troubleshoot if you don't know where to look. If you like this video, let us know by leaving a thumbs up, commenting and subscribing. The feedback we get from you guys is what keeps the videos coming. Thank you for watching.